In this video, we'll use the Oracle Bare Metal Cloud Services Web Console to create a block storage volume and attach it to an Oracle Linux instance. We'll see that the block storage volumes are actually hosted on an iSCSI server and accessed by an instance through the iSCSI protocol. There are three steps required to add a block volume storage device to an Oracle Linux instance. Step one is to use the block volume service to create a block volume. Step two is to use the compute service to attach the block volume to an instance. The third step is not performed from the bare metal web console, but is performed from the Oracle Linux command line. So step three is to log in to the instance and use the iSCSI ADM command line tool to configure the iSCSI connection. After we complete these steps, the block volume is available to the operating system as a newly attached SCSI disk. You can now partition the disk, create a file system on the disk, and mount the disk. We'll complete all of these steps in this video. This is the home page of the Oracle Bare Metal Cloud Services web console. Before using the block volume service, let's review our Oracle Linux instance. So I'm going to click Compute, and then we'll see our uh, OL. 7U3 instance that was created in a previous video. We'll click the instance name to view the details and we'll see that our instance is a virtual machine. The shape is VM. It was created from an Oracle Linux 7.3 image. We also see that our instance is in availability domain 1 and this is important to know because when we create our block volume it must be in the same availability domain as the instance that we're going to attach it to. Scroll down if necessary to view attached block volumes and we see that there are currently no block volumes attached to this instance. So step one is to create a block storage volume. So I'm going to click storage and you see here a couple uh, terminated block volumes. I created these early, but I deleted them. It just takes a little bit of time before they actually go away. So I'm going to create a new block volume. I'll click Create Block Volume. The uh, Create Block Volume Create Block uh, Volume window is displayed. For purposes of access control, you need to specify a compartment, and it defaults to whatever compartment is currently chosen, and the root department is chosen. Um, so we'll take that and you enter a name and I'll just enter disk underscore one. Select the availability domain for the block volume and again this must be the same availability domain as the instance we're going to attach it to. So I'm going to choose 81. Uh, the size is from 50 gig to 2 terabytes and I'll just take the default which is 1 terabyte. Then I'll click create block volume. The status will be provisioning at first, but then changes to available. And it took about 15 seconds of real time to get to this available available state. There's a action a menu here at the side that had three options. You can also click the block volume name to see the details. There's some options at the top of the window, iSCSI commands and information, detach from instance, uh, delete block volume. Uh, we'll come back to the iSCSI commands and information after we attach the block volume to an instance. Detach, of course, only is available after the block volume is attached. At the bottom of the window is an option to create backups, and you can also see any backups that are currently there, which are there are none. So that completes step one. Step two, then, is to use the compute service and attach our block volume to an instance. So I'm going to click, click Compute, click our instance name to show the details. Uh, scroll down and you'll see Attach Block Volumes, which I'll click. Again, you need to select a, a compartment. And uh, notice the root compartment has our disk. If I select a different compartment, it has different disk. If I select another, the third compartment there, there are no disk. So you need to make sure you choose the, the compartment that the disk belongs in and that's our root compartment and then I'll select our disk one block volume. You can optionally enable CHAP. CHAP stands for Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol. 
Uh, as we said, the Oracle Bare Metal Cloud Service uses iSCSI to connect block volumes to instances. And CHAP is a security protocol used by iSCSI for authentication between a volume and an instance. I'm not going to enable CHAP for this video. So I'll just click Attached. The block volume now appears in the list. The status is Attaching, but then changes to Attached. And it took about 15 to 20 seconds of real time to get to this attached state. There's an action menu again to view the block volume details, the iSCSI commands and information to detach. I'm going to click the iSCSI uh, commands and information to bring up this window. You'll see the IP address in the port of the, IP, uh, the iSCSI server. And security lists, which we learned about when we created a virtual cloud network and subnets, are not enforced for traffic involving the 169.254 CIDR block. So we do not add or need to add a security rule to trust the iSCSI service. There's the volume IQN, which IQN stands for iSCSI Qualified Name. And most importantly are three iSCSI ADM commands that we need to connect our block storage volume to our instance uh, guest OS, which is Oracle Linux in this case. So I'm already logged in. Uh, I can run the host name command to see that this is our OL73 instance. I'll, before I run the iSCSI commands, I want to show you the available block devices. So right now, there's only one disk, SDA. It has three partitions on it, SDA 1, 2, and 3. If I run an FDisk command, you also see that there's only one disk, SDA. It's a 50 gig disk. So that was before we run the iSCSI commands. And now we're going to just copy and paste these three iSCSI commands in order from the bare metal cloud service window into our putty session. So I'll, again, I'll view this commands. I'm going to select the first one and copy it and go back to my putty window and paste it. Then I'm going to select the second iSCSI ADM command, copy it, go back to our putty window and paste it. And then finally, the third iSCSI ADM command, copy it, go back to our putty window and paste it. And now I'll run these the, some, the, the same Linux commands that I ran early. So I'll recall the ls-l slash dev sd star. And now you see our new disk, sdb. If I run uh, the, the fdisk command again, you'll see that it's sdb is, uh, is a... Uh, one terabyte disk. This is our this is our block volume that was uh, now accessible after we ran those iSCSI ADM commands. So we can use it. We can make a make a file system. I'll make an ext4 file system on uh, SDB. Probably should partition it, but I will not for this purposes of this video. And after it's got a file system, now I can make a directory. And you need, to, you need to use sudo in front of these commands because we're logged in as opc, not root. And then uh, I can mount my dev sdb on my mount point. And now it's available. I do a df minus h. You can see that sdb is mounted on slash extra disk. I do an ls minus l. And you can see that it's available to use. So I'll just to prove, I'll use, uh, I'll copy some files. I'll copy some files out of the boot uh, directory onto extra disk. And you can see that they're there now. So to summarize, in this video, we added a block volume to an Oracle Linux instance in the Oracle Bare Metal Cloud Service. We learned that block volumes are actually hosted on an iSCSI server and accessed by, by an instance through the iSCSI protocol. We saw that there were really three steps to add storage capacity to an instance. We used the block volume service to create a block volume. Step two was to use the compute service to attach the block volume to an instance. And then step three was to log on to the instance and run iSCSI ADM commands. And we saw uh, fortunately, that these iSCSI ADM commands are actually provided for us by the bare metal cloud services, so all we had to do was copy and paste. We performed these three steps. The block volume was then available to the operating system as a newly attached SCSI disk. We then made a file system on the device. We mounted it, and we used it. 
We didn't show this in the video, but on Oracle Linux instances, it's important to include the underscore net dev and no fail options on non root block volumes in the etcfs tab, which is the file system mount table. These options will ensure that the Oracle Linux instance can launch even if the iSCSI service and the block devices are not available.